when we say that we're going to do use a structured literacy uh, approach or we're going to do a systematic phonics approach whatever name you want to stick on it that it basically follows these steps and mary you'll recognize this because this is what maria montessori came up with almost 100 years ago so we know we get do this oral language development from birth right so we've talked about that a couple of times and that then children begin to develop being able to hear the sounds in our language. That's how they learn how to talk because they hear the sounds in our language and they start to be able to repeat and refine their and develop the, the muscles in their mouth and their tongue and all of it to be able to reproduce those sounds. And our speech and language people could probably give us a dissertation about that. But they're hearing the sounds of the language, they're reproducing the sounds of the language. And then we do this funny thing where we say, okay, now we're going to take the sounds of the language and we're going to attach them to symbols. We use an alphabetic language and not a picture language. So that's where this alphabetic principle, this fancy language came from to say that the kids connect the sounds to the, the symbols. And then after they connect the sounds to the symbols, they start to read and to spell individual words. And this is where reading, the foundation of reading happens is right in here. It doesn't happen here. So in whole language, we think, oh, it happens here by reading phonetic books or decodable books over and over again, over and over again. And those books, have, that style of book has been around since the 70s in the United States. Mac and Tab, right? Some of us are old enough to remember those theories. Um, and now there's tons of choices. But this is the sequence of steps. And this isn't something we made up. This is something that the science has borne out. And David Kilpatrick, if I get a chance um, in an upcoming Saturday meeting, I'll show you the slide from his Austin lecture that he did a few months ago. And David Kilpatrick is one of the leading um, college professors who's done a lot of research in the around the science taking the neuroscience and the educational research and combining them to say what's what do kids really need to be doing so this reading and spelling of individual words now what i should do is have like an arrow here saying you just do this until there's fluency and then you do reading phrases where there's two words together or three words together and that is asking the child to combine their skills. So they go from reading these individual words and to Mary's point, she said, oh, well, they, do they just read the whole list? Sure, but you can also have them read one section repeatedly until they read it fluently and then go and read another section. And usually it takes three times. They read it once, they mark it and they read it and then they read it again and read it again. And by the third time they've read it, they're reading it so much faster and they're super proud of themselves. So you can re have them read the words, these words repeatedly. And another way to build that repetition is to play the games with these words until they've developed fluency with them. And then when that's happened, then you go into saying, can we read phrases? And you can read the phrases. You can take the words and cut them up and to put them on three different cards and they unscramble them and put them in word order. That's where they're working on their syntax there, right? Like what does the order, what is a mean, making meaning out of these phrases? Is it the rod hot or the hot rod? Which one makes sense, right? Does that come in the beginning? Oh, that comes before, but it comes first. And then you do the same thing with sentences that provide another layer of difficulty. So we're reading our phrases, two words, and then three words, which is important for your youngest children, but it doesn't really matter if you're working with older children, whether it's two or three. And then you're going to read your sentences. And we haven't done it yet, but we'll show you how to do cut up sentences where you divide the sentence into two parts and you take a set and you match them up or you divide it up into every single word. Then you read phonetic books, phonetic decodables. And with older children, they really want to get here, right? So it doesn't mean you can't do this. You have to not do this. It's just that this piece isn't going to develop fluency. It doesn't develop fluency. It just doesn't. This has to happen. This reading of the words and the spelling of the words.